Hello, hello, hello to all of you beautiful people out there. My name is Paula Alphonse and I am with P Plus Consulting. And tonight we are talking with Megan, which is a, who is a paramedic, and she will tell us what it's like to do her job nowadays. So, hello, hey, Megan. Megan. Guy, nice to see you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, my pleasure. So we're going to start with the usual, which is if you could tell us a little bit about you, who you are, uh, what you do, and how long you've been doing it. So my name is Megan. I've uh, been a paramedic since 2016 now, originally from Winnipeg, and um, was doing some office work, decided it wasn't for me, and went the road of being a paramedic. So. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Victoria, BC, to do my, my EMR program, which is a prerequisite for being a PCP mm -hmm. uh, paramedic. And uh, so I went out to Victoria, did my EMR, decided I loved it, and I wanted to continue with my, my PCP program, which is the paramedicine program. And uh, it took me a little bit to get going in, in Victoria, but once I did, I uh, became a full-time Paramedic, or I, I certified as a paramedic, and then I did a transfer back to Winnipeg. Decided, it, you know, it was better to be with family and friends here, mm -hmm. and it was quite an easy process. So now I've been working as a paramedic for two and a half years, rurally, rural Manitoba, and um, it's been a great experience. And I'm definitely happy with my decision. Good, good to hear. Uh... So could you give us a sense of what a regular day uh, looks like for you? And that was before uh, COVID-19. Yeah, so uh, I, I'm a 12-hour shift. So I work uh, four on, four off, two days, two nights, four off. So I get into work. Uh, you do a truck check, make sure all your equipment is in stock from the last crew, making sure that your stuff isn't expired. And... Uh, you know, as soon as you get there, you, you grab your narcotics to have on your pouch. You have your pager, your radio, and you're you're ready to go um, at any point throughout the day. I'm lucky. I'm at a two truck station, so that means there's two ambulances always there, unless okay. someone's up. Um, case at every station, and and some of them are just only one. So. Um, this we go back and forth, so it kind of gives it a little bit, but our, our call volume is quite higher. Um, and we have we cover a lot more of the a lot a lot of area. Um, so we need the two trucks. So um, so throughout the day, you know, we're checking we, we do get a lot of emails, surprisingly. I know a lot of people don't think paramedics do get emails, but we get quite a bit um, with memo changes or stuff that's you know new that's coming, stuff that isn't uh, or that's going to be taken off truck, things that um, are adjusted with protocols, new protocols. So there's always changes constantly. Um, and then when we get a call, there's two different kinds of calls that we can get. We can get a primary or a transfer. Primary calls are to pull 911 call that we get dispatched to. Um, dispatch asks standard questions of, you know, um, call taker questions, pass it off to dispatch, and they kind of relay at what if we're going to merge, non-emerge, so emerge, lights and sirens, non-emerge, we're just driving regularly, and we go from there. And then we also get uh, um, transfers, which they're from hospital to another hospital or some, or uh, to an appointment or something that they need to have on a stretcher. Or they're they're not stable, but they they need to go, you know, um, for a cardiac surgery or something. So we get those throughout the day. And when we're not doing those calls, we're uh, waiting in station, keeping up on station duties, um, and whatnot. So, so it really varies. Some days we're busy, we don't see the station all day, and some days, you know, we're um, we're just hanging out, just waiting for a call, trying to keep busy at around the station. Uh, has anything changed since uh, COVID nineteen? Absolutely, yeah. So um, even just with so changes for COVID, as soon as we get on um, to the station, we have to do a screening. So we're, we walk in, sanitize, take our temperature, sanitize. Um, my partner would take his as well. And we have to go online, submit it, 
and answer all these questions. If we if we fail any of the questionnaires, so any sort of throat, uh, runny nose, fever, mm -hmm. anything, we do have to get home, we have to go home, and the truck will go to service, and we we do have to go get tested for COVID. Even um, they have changed it a lot when it when it first came out. It was very uh, simple. It was just sore throat, runny nose, and you have to go home. So I think a lot of people were doing that, and then they, they started changing it to, you know, um, non-seasonal allergies, or if you have body aches, it's not from exercising. So they had to okay. clarify a lot, because I think there was a lot of confusion when it first came out. But I mean, there's there's so many things that are now coming yeah. out uh, with COVID. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. they, you know, they kind of have to start being a little bit more specific when it comes to that yeah. kind of stuff. In terms of, uh, you mentioned some of the change that you've noticed in the way you do your job, but in terms of uh, the people that you're providing service to, have you noticed a difference between uh, pre-COVID and post-COVID? Yeah, absolutely. I find that um, I'm really observing that there's two extremes. There is an extreme of uh, people that really don't care. They think that it doesn't affect them. Uh, I'm healthy, I'm not gonna get it. Mm -hmm. Which unfortunately that's that's a poor mindset to have because at the end of the day, a lot of the times mm -hmm. you're asymptomatic and you're gonna pass it along to someone else. Um, and you don't even know it. I could easily be you know, totally fine and not have a simple thing because I'm I'm fairly healthy and I'll pass it on and I could kill them. So yeah. I think that's a poor mindset that I'm I'm seeing, unfortunately. Um I don't know if it's a lack of information, if they're not watching a lot of the news or, you know, keeping up with everything that's happening or it's just mm -hmm. their, their choice. Um, <laughs> but um, I am seeing that. But then I'm also seeing the other side too where our calls definitely have decreased. Um, surprisingly, because people are kind of worried about us, they, you know, they don't really want to get sick from us. I think a lot of them think that we have it. So, um, so they don't they don't really call us if they don't need to or um, they aren't calling because they don't want to go to the hospital. Unfortunately, those aren't the cleanest places. They do a great job at you know making sure they are doing their due diligence of cleaning. Unfortunately, you can't. It's a virus. I mean, it's mm -hmm. really hard to to keep it um, keep it clean around there with people constantly coming in and out. However, mm -hmm. though, um, hospitals now are doing no visitors, so that that has helped a lot. Um, so when I bring a patient in, if a family member has to come, I have to let them know that they would have to sit in the parking lot in their car or they'll just get a phone call because the hospital unfortunately won't let them in. But I think it's great for everyone else's safety there. Okay. So even in the hospital, whether you call for someone to, to be picked up, you won't be able to go with them as you used to before. Is that what you're telling me? Sorry, can you repeat that? Um, in the past, let's just say you would call for an ambulance and the ambulance would show up, you would almost automatically go into the ambulance with the patient. What you're telling me is that is no longer taking place and then the hospitals are not also admitting visitors? Yeah, um, so it's family members. Any family members that if I were to go to a call and they're like, I need to go with them, uh, you know, they're, they have anxiety without me being there, we have to say, unfortunately, like, you can't come into the hospital. Okay. Um, so they're not letting any visitors in. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And I know you started the conversation saying that you had made the right choice. This was the job uh, for you. How does it feel now uh, in terms of going to work every day? Uh, any particular fears or concerns that you have with respect to your own health? Um, so yeah, when it when it first started, um, COVID first came, that was a really um, an easy feeling, I think, and I think it was the unknown. No one really knew what to expect. Uh, we didn't know how this would affect our job, and it caused a lot of anxiety um, on a lot of people that normally don't even have anxiety. It's just uh, my partner, for example, his wife's due date is today, and he has to go to work and. And he's scared that it's going to come home to his wife and to his other son. And and so that was a, a really hard thing, I think, when uh, COVID first came out. Mm -hmm. Luckily, there was a lot of changes, um, some for the better, some for the worse. Um, but there was a lot of changes within the region and within the province that um, 
it it did uh, make things a little bit easier on us, maybe a little bit of peace of mind. But mm -hmm. now, I mean, I'm getting about 30 emails a day, changes of protocols, um, <sighs> two, two changes to one protocol a day. And I find that is tough because, I mean, if we're not on our phone checking our, our work email mm -hmm. or, you know, checking the, the emails on our computer, we, we're – we could easily miss something and that something could be detrimental. And I think that's kind of a stressor on its own. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I find it's just not knowing if you're a carrier or not. And to me, like I'm, I'm really good at social distancing uh, when I'm not at work and I'm not seeing my family or my friends. And it's, it's hard um, as all, all everyone here knows. Um, mm -hmm. But then you go to work and then you're, next to someone right next to you and then it's like well have you been social distancing i don't really know like do i trust you know so it's hard yeah. to know mm -hmm. kind of who you're with and if you have a casual or someone on overtime picking up with you um you know have you been social distancing have you been doing yeah. your part and i think that's it it's like trying to you have to keep people accountable and mm -hmm. or you're going to or you're going to scenes and you know there's 20 family members here oh. watching you do your thing. And, you know, I, I appreciate that you all want to be here and you want to be, is, is that mm -hmm. saying your prayers or whatever the case may be. But unfortunately, no one there is wearing masks. So it, it's really difficult in that sense. So I feel like it was really stressful. It's gone down a little bit now. Now that there's more protocols in place, it's not new. It's, it's kind of been here mm -hmm. for a bit and they can kind of find a game plan on how to better proceed. So it, it, it has improved, definitely, um, but I'd be crazy to say if it doesn't affect me mentally, right? Yeah, and the challenge is uh, for everyone, it's a huge change and it's figuring out how do we make it happen. And the organizations are trying as much as possible to keep you safe and healthy while they're doing the job. But then at the same time, they're adding to the job by uh, changing the protocols and, make it, and, and making sure that everything is as up to date as possible. So it's it's not a perfect pace. It's not a, one of those situations where it is, I'm so used to doing this and I love mm -hmm. doing it. Every day you have to recheck everything. So it keeps you on, uh, I could say on the edge uh, almost mm -hmm. uh, like every day. Absolutely. If I was to ask you, um, how do you maintain your mental health through all of this? Um, so I, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. Um, so one thing I'm really lucky for is, um, I actually work out at a CrossFit gym, CrossFit Optus. And as soon as this happened, they were actually one of the first CrossFit gyms in Winnipeg to offer t for their members to take home some equipment. So, um, okay. having exercise in my daily routine okay. for my mental health, that that hasn't really changed other than me just having to to know to have enough energy to do it on my own and to plan my workouts. Yeah. So I'm very lucky I got a lot of equipment from them. So I have a full gym in my apartment here, which is, is quite nice. Okay. Um, and I think, you know, I'm a pretty vocal person when it comes okay. to my emotions and my feelings. And I think that, um, I have a good support team. I have really good friends and family that are constantly, you know, checking in on me and I'm checking in on them, even though they're, I mean, working from home and they're bored. It's, <laughs> I, I get it. Like I couldn't imagine on my four days off, I normally pick up overtime, which, you know, it's because I, I'm not used to staying at, at home and I totally understand that. And I think that takes a huge toll on your mental health as well. So I think that, even maybe me selfishly by checking in on other people and maybe distracting myself with with mm -hmm. them and that that does help me um and you know I'm, I'm lucky to be working as crazy as that sounds you know mm -hmm. unfortunately a lot of people don't have that opportunity right and they're mm -hmm. they're struggling in, in other ways so i'm very fortunate to be working and so i find sometimes just you know taking a moment to reflect on how fortunate I am mm -hmm. it, it does help my mental health for sure um, and I think also too like just getting mm -hmm. outside I, I totally respect social distancing so I think it's important to remember that like 
if you're keeping your distance, it's okay to go for a walk. It's okay, but make sure you, you know, you're washing your hands, every handle mm -hmm. you touch and, mm -hmm. and taking care of yourself like that. Um, but I, I think now that this, the sun is getting out, I don't think that that should be something that, you know, we're trying to be afraid of going outside because you kind of feel mm -hmm. guilty whenever you do anything outside your home. But I think it's important that, you know, you're still taking sure. care of your mental health by, getting outside and and really um and doing things for yourself in that way because we can't do a, a lot of things for ourselves that we normally do unfortunately i find it interesting because uh with the spring summer coming mm -hmm. there's that that willingness or that urge to go out and do things and then you still have to remind yourself social mm -hmm. distancing so no, there will, we won't be going to the beach. No, we won't be going for that beer at uh, the, the corner uh, patio. Uh, so it's those things that uh, as we're moving into this and we still don't have a clear sense of what the future will hold, there's that, that sense of, huh, feels like I have to learn something new almost every day. Mm -hmm. If you were to think of maybe so far, because you've talked about your gratitude, you've talked about the exercise, you've talked about those uh, the connecting with friends and family and your support system. If you were to think about lesson learned so far for you, uh, whether it's personally or professionally, what would that be for you? Um, so that's a tough one because um, you know, so I'm, I'm very appreciative, like I said, of my family and my friends, and um, I think it's kind of made me appreciate uh, the relationships I do have with mm -hmm. them. Um, you kind of take them for granted, and I think that was a huge lesson, right? Mm -hmm. um, my mom's simply saying good morning, and I get irritated, but it's because I just got off work and, you know, things like that, that um, it's tough, but, you know, you kind of take, take a step back and you reflect and mm -hmm. you're, I'm quite fortunate that I, I do have that. And I think that's a huge lesson for me is that a lot of people have lost a lot of their loved ones. And I couldn't even imagine not being able to say goodbye because you can't go into the hospital, not being mm -hmm. able to have a funeral for someone. Um, and I think that was a huge kind of eye opener for me is that you got to appreciate what you do have um, and maybe reach out a bit more. I mean, I, I do tend to reach out to my family and friends, but maybe not enough. And I think that, you know, with FaceTime, I'm FaceTiming way more than I ever have in my entire <laughs> life. Um, I take people yeah. off guard. My friend literally told me, you have to start letting me know when you're going to be FaceTime. Maybe because I was just like, instead of a text, I'm just going to FaceTime. And so it's, um, you know, that was a huge lesson in itself. Um, but I think it's also taught a huge lesson that's taught me. It's to slow down a little bit. Mm. I work, a, I work a lot. Um, I work a full-time job. I have a side business. I keep really busy and, uh, you know, when I need to run, rush to the grocery store, I have a time frame. I know I have 30 minutes. I need to get in, get out. And I think now this has really taught me to slow down because now I, I know I can't be in a rush if I'm going to go to Costco or to the grocery store because who knows how long I'm going to wait in line, mm -hmm. uh, how long it's going to take me going down every aisle because you need to follow the rules of, yeah. of the arrows and whatnot. So um, it's definitely taught me just to – you know, take care of myself and slow things down in that, in that sense, for sure. Not be in such a hurry. Um, and also, you know, take care of myself and make sure that I, I do, you know, don't overwork because I'll get sick and then I'll, mm -hmm. you know, um, can, it's, it's easy to be, you know, compromised, right. And then you're more susceptible mm -hmm. to, to receiving COVID-19. Uh, so it's, I think there's a lot of little lessons, um, but I do think it's going to change in a whole. And I think even just by, you know, the way you're constantly washing your hands and mm -hmm. uh, hand sanitizer. My hands are raw, <laughs> so raw from, from working. 
and they definitely were before, but um, now oh, it's definitely sure. every little thing that I touch. I'm sanitizing my pen, I'm mm -hmm. cleaning everything. Mm -hmm. I'm just more mindful about everything that I touch while I'm on the call. We're gonna finish with this question and I'm gonna ask you, if you had a magic wand, what would be the one thing you would want more of or less of? It's a really tough question, Paula, because I can, I'll definitely say, obviously, uh, I wish there was no pandemics. I wish mm. that uh, this wasn't our reality. Uh, unfortunately, it is. Um, and I think that uh, one thing that I would definitely want um, less of is less of unfortunately people dying from this. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even want to look at the statistics in the States, um, mm -hmm. but especially here. And um, there's a lot of people that, like I said earlier, they they can't say goodbye to their loved ones. Mm -hmm. They can't even have a funeral for them. They don't, like, it, it's wild to me to mm -hmm. even understand that because I've experienced death and in family and at work and I've seen how much it takes a toll on someone and grieving is important and being able to say your goodbyes and to deal with that um, is really important. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't get that opportunity right now. Uh, and then, you know, I think one thing that I would want more of is more people just realizing the severity of it. I see a lot of ignorance in people and you know what, like I said earlier, maybe that's just ill-informed. I, I really don't know. Um, and that's okay, but be willing to learn and to understand and understand how real this is. And yes, I understand you're healthy and you know, I'll never get this is what people say. Like, oh, I'm totally fine. Yeah. I'm super healthy. I don't get sick ever. It's like, mm -hmm. I understand that. However, it's so easy to pass it along and I think it's important mm -hmm. that now that you know I don't know about other provinces really um but I know Manitoba just in, uh, just came out with a new one today that there or yesterday that there's going to be different phases and we're going to see how we're going to slowly start integrating back mm -hmm. into our, our norm yeah. and um, I think that it's important that you know I want less people to be ignorant and more people just mm -hmm. trying to understand that we can take five steps back right now if we don't mm -hmm. continue with how we've been doing things. Yeah. And I think it's important to, you know, to be COVID-19, to just be aware and to stick with what you're doing and um, even do it better. <laughs> Wash your hands more, you know, <laughs> yeah. stay away. Like, I don't know why, but people at the grocery store think it's okay to come reach over my shoulder. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's wild. It's wild that some people just still don't understand yeah. that there's a pandemic going on. And I think it's just, you know, it it's important to just not overdo the news because I know it could be so overwhelming and yeah. it, it does do a lot of depression and on just on that for a lot of people just watching it. And, uh, but I think it's important to keep in the know and to make sure that you know what's happening in mm -hmm. your area and how we could better get this going. Like I'm sure everyone would love to have a summer again. So if everyone could just work together and, you know, try to, try to take care of ourselves and not pass it along. I would love more yeah. of that, especially at work. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's frustrating when you see people in a group and you're driving by them in the ambulance and or you're com like for a cardiac arrest I need to wear glasses mask two pairs of gloves um, a gown I'm dripping sweat I'm not enjoying myself whatsoever I'm lit I it's not my choice to go to work mm -hmm. I'm going to work I'm doing my job and uh, you see people just out there having fun it's like Stop yeah. hanging out with your friends for a sec and, and you know, just appreciate that people are out here trying to mm -hmm. make it a little better and to try to help with this, right? So I think that I would love more of people understanding the whole, not just themselves and being selfish 
to, they, they just really need someone to hang out with. I think uh, at least what I'm observing in my neighborhood and what I've heard from different people I've spoken to, it's for me, it's the power of habits. Those things we're so accustomed to and we don't even think about it twice. And we can be lulled when there's no one around that has uh, that seems to be sick because it's not one of those diseases that you can see something is wrong. So there's that tendency to say, oh, it's not that bad. It's all good. It's just going to go past because it's, uh, it's an invisible threat in some way. So it's hard. There's a bit of denial, but there's also the 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 wanting to go back into my comfort zone. Summer is coming. Let's hang out. Let's let's do this. Let's wear those nice little uh, summer <laughs> outfits. And it's just like, uh, no, not yet. You know, wait. And if you wear it, maybe put it on social media in front of your mirror. Do whatever it is. But it might not be that I'm gonna have. I'm gonna go to the park and have everybody look at me. Because yeah. That's not social distancing. Yeah. But thank you, thank you, thank you very much for being so candid with us and let us know uh, what your reality every day is. It's not, uh, I will say to you what I hear a lot of people say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for putting your life on, your, on the line every single day so that the rest of the society can be better or can get better. So this is one of those times where I might be second guessing, why, why, why did I do that job? Would have been better doing IT. But reality is, uh, thank you for, for being of service to all of us. Thank you, and I, yeah. and I appreciate it because I know um, I wouldn't be able to do it without a, a lot of other frontline workers, right? Nurses, doctors, yeah. my grocery workers, the liquor store <laughs> employee. <laughs> you know, everyone. You know, it's 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 important that everyone is thanked for that. Yeah, and uh, so I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, while some of us might get to have a choice as to whether I step out or not. There's quite a wide range of people. And you're talking about the, uh, the liquor store, we're talking about the grocery store. Uh, you know, all of those places are there to support in such in a way that you can still uh, remain in confinement. Because if we had removed everything, then of course people were going to break uh, all the rules. So that's the part of the reality. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, accepting to be on this live with us. For all of you out there that are go doing their best to get through this particular situation, I just want to remind you of three little things. First, take care of yourself. And don't forget to fill up your own cup because you can't pour and help others if your cup is empty. Be kind to one another because we'd never know what the other people are going through. And with social distancing, they might not even have an outlet to, to let all of those anxiety, fears, concerns come out. And then pay it forward in whichever way you can, be it by calling someone, be it by being generous with your smiles, are you acro crossing people's path, and offering a, a kind word from afar. There are people that unfortunately are all by themselves and might not have such a wide network to support them. So try as much as possible to be nice to everyone so that we can all move together to a better state. Thank you very much, Megan, and all of you for choosing to spend this time with us. Thanks, Paula.